Hello class, it's time for our daily read aloud and we are continuing the adventures of Malu in the first rule of punk. Um, the previous chapter ended with her getting ready to go to school and she had wrote, written a note to her worry dolls, wrote her worries down and uh, I mean she's like I don't believe that it's gonna help but she still did it anyway so and there were some pretty valid concerns and worries and it kind of makes me feel bad for her. So chapter five is presumably going to pick up with her going to school. Chapter five. When my alarm went off the next morning, I hid under the comforter. My eyes felt dry from crying. They stung like I'd been, when I'd been at the beach all day and gotten too much salt water in them. Mom knocked on the door and poked her head in. We may not have much in the fridge, but we have coffee, she said, triumphantly holding up a package of beans from Kalka. You want? I need, I said, peeking out at her. I'll do some grocery shopping today, Mom said. We could pick up something to eat on the way to school. Can I walk to school alone? Walk alone? No way, Mom said. Please, I said. It's not like I'll get lost. I know, but it's your first day. I want to see you off. Fine, whatever. I kicked the heavy comforter to the floor. Great, I'm excited too, Mom said. Coffee in 10 minutes. I rolled my eyes and dragged myself out of bed. I unpacked a bag until I found my green jeans. I put on my favorite Blondie t-shirt and my silver sequin Chuck Taylors. Dad gave me the sneakers last year after I read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. In the movie version, Dorothy wears ruby slippers. But in the book, she wears silver shoes that she takes off the Wicked Witch of the East when the house lands on her and kills her. It's not until the end of the story that Dorothy learns she can wish on those shoes to take her back to Kansas. I've been wearing them for a week now, but they seem to have lost their magic, because no matter how many times I closed my eyes and clicked my heels, I was still in Chicago, never back home. A hole had grown on the sole of one shoe where the rubber had worn away. Nothing little duct tape can't fix. I found my roll and did a quick patch job, stretching a strip of tape across the bottom of my shoe and over the sides. On, in the bathroom, I found, looked at my reflection in the mirror and made a face when I remembered one of Dad's favorite jokes. You got your Mexican from your mom and your punk from me, he'd say. I had the Mexican going for sure. Brown skin and thick brown hair that was lighter than mom's but darker than dad's and that I usually wore two braids. I had my mom's dark eyes too. My punk on the other hand was terribly lacking. I washed my face and braided my hair like I did every morning. Before I left the bathroom I noticed mom's makeup bag on the counter and got an idea. I dug around until I found a black eyeliner pencil. I opened the cap and squinted closely at the tip, unsure where to start then set it gently against the inside corner of my eyes and drew up, tracing my eyelid on to the top. I imagined that I was coloring inside the lines of a coloring book, but the pencil was waxy and smudgy, and an eye is nothing like a flat sheet of paper. My hand trembled as I moved the pencil closer. I did my best not to poke myself. There's nothing punk about an eye injury, unless it happened in a mosh pit, of course. As I drew what I hoped looked like wingtips, I thought about the singer with the dark, dramatic eyes on the album cover at Spins and Needles. That was the look I was going for. I found the glittery, glittery black eyeshadow Mom had used last Halloween and swiped some over each eyelid. I filled my lips with the darkest lipstick I could find to finish the look. In the end, the cat eyes were crooked and my eyelid, eyelids felt sticky and heavy, but I definitely looked a little more punk. Coffee's poured, Mom called from the kitchen. Coming, I said, stuffing everything back into her makeup bag. I headed to the kitchen, where Mom leaned against the counter, writing out a grocery list. As I grabbed the mug of coffee Mom placed on the table for me, I noticed my fingers were covered in glitter and eyeliner. I wiped them across my jeans. Ready, she asked. She looked up, pen in hand, and stared at my face for a few seconds. Oh, no, she said, shaking her head. I don't think so. What is it, Mom? I asked. There was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. What it is, is that you are not going to school looking like that. What's wrong with how I look? Mom gave me a get, seri get serious stare. Do you really need a rundown, she asked. You're 12 years old, for starters. Almost 13, I said. Semantics. You're 12, senorita. Please, mom, I said. Please. It's your first day at a new school, she said. Is this really the impression you want to make on people who don't know anything about you? It's just makeup. If you're interested in wearing makeup, I can teach you how to apply it properly, mom said. Like una senorita. I thought about the singer on the album cover and wondered who taught her how to apply makeup. I think it looks cool, I said. I was going for a different look. Well, in that case, you succeeded. You look like Nosferatu. Who's Nosferatu? A creepy vampire, Mom said. Look him up. You're so mean, I said. 
Nosferatu is like the old 1920s bald vampire with the long fingers. He's like... <laughs> Nosferatu means vampire, I think, in some language. You're so mean, I said. Mom's eyes trailed down to my torn jeans and beat up duct tapes, duct taped sneakers. When I was your age, I couldn't even afford to buy new clothes, she said. I just don't get it. You look like una huerfanita. A what, I asked? Una huerfanita. An orphan, Mom repeated. I do not look like an orphan, I said, picturing, uh, picturing Oliver Twist asking for more porridge. Mom attempted to stick a finger through a hole in the side of my jeans. I jumped out of her reach. Mom! She stared at me with a frown on her face. Please, I said, can't I just do this one thing? You'll never ask me for anything again, right? Exactly, I said. Mom stared at me for a few more uncomfortably long seconds. I can't imagine they allow seventh graders to come to school made up like that, and it's going to take forever to wash that off. I could see in Mom's face that she wasn't happy about it, but I couldn't help smiling. Is that a yes, I asked? This isn't a yes, Mom said. This is a go ahead and learn the hard way, Malu. Yes, I whooped. If I get a call from the school about it being distracting, this nonsense is over, she said, wagging her finger. You hear me? Why would it be distracting, I asked, batting my sticky eyelashes. Mom sighed and stuffed her list into her purse. I couldn't believe she had actually agreed to let me go to school wearing makeup. Vamanos, creature of the night, she said, shaking her head. Oh, rebellion. There's a part of me that does not look forward to the days where my daughter gets that age and wants to rebel. It's going to be hard because I'm all for self-expression, but, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. I remember rebelling. Back in my day, we wore band t-shirts and movie t-shirts and you know, chucks and jeans and vans and got in trouble for it. Anyway, yeah, Malu's, she's rebelling. Why don't you guys check out what you need to do to respond to the, today's reading?